Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Let us try to take question number 6 to 10 of ISI PEA 2004 paper. All right, read question number 6. It says in the linear regression of y on x, the estimate of slope parameter is given by covariance of xy by variance of x. So you remember that when we were doing byx, it was written as summation xi yi by summation xi square. And just think about it. If I just divide the numerator and the denominator by n, I will go ahead and get this as covariance of xy divided by the variance of x. So we can go ahead and we can say that this is correct, that byx can be written as the covariance of xy divided by the variance of x. That would be the correct statement to say. So now this says the slope parameter for the regression coefficient x on y. So now we are reversing this. Now we are saying we want to have bxy. So this will be covariance of xy divided by the variance of y. Divided by the variance of y. And as you can go ahead and see here that here this value is not given in any of these options. So the right answer will be none of these above. Okay, come to the next question. This says you're given that the function is e to the power x. Now just think about it. When I look into e to the power x, the function is e to the power x. So if I find out the first derivative of the function, f dash x, I will get that also as e to the power x. And if I find out the second derivative of the function, f double dash x, that will also be e to the power x. And we know that e to the power x is always positive. It always gives us positive answer. So we are certain that <clears throat> f double dash x is positive and therefore we can go ahead and say that this is going to be convex. It's going to be a convex function. Now since this is convex, for convex functions we know that the line always lies above the curve. The line always lies above the curve. That means that we are sure that for convex functions this property holds true that lambda f of a plus 1 minus lambda f of b will be greater than f of lambda a plus 1 minus lambda b. So if I were to go ahead and take a value here a and if I were to take a value here b and I were to take some weighted average here lambda a plus 1 minus lambda b and if I were to take the value of the function from here this would have given me f of lambda a plus 1 minus lambda b. And if I were to take the average of these two points and jot it down here, it would have given me lambda f of a plus 1 minus lambda f of b. So for convex functions, we know that lambda f of a plus 1 minus lambda f of b will be greater than f of lambda a plus 1 minus lambda b. Now, just try to think this a bit more and you will realize in this case that if I just take lambda as one as half, so everywhere instead of lambda, I can just replace that with half and I will have half, half, half and half everywhere, right? So, if I now go ahead and replace A with X1 and B with X2, I will go ahead and I will get this as this, right? I will go ahead and get f of x1 plus f of x2 by 2 is greater than or equal to f of x1 plus x2 by, right? I will go ahead and I will get this. So this is nothing but this is your um, option number B seems correct, right? Option number B is correct option. That f of x1 plus f of x2 by 2 is greater than f of x1 plus f of x2 by 2. Okay, right beta. Now come to the next question. Achha, by the way, you can also prove this statement using the properties of AM and GM. 
and we know that ams are always greater than gm so you can go ahead and use that property also to prove it there are multiple ways to prove this thing but somehow this is the easier one okay come to the next question this is consider the series defined below so this series is given to you like this and this and you need to tell whether these are converging or diverging series clearly if i look into the second one i know that this is half plus half square plus half cube and so on and uh, this is an infinite gp and its sum should be a upon 1 minus r so a is the first term upon 1 minus r is the common ratio so i will get half upon half that means i will get the sum as 1 so clearly i know that at least the second series will convert so this is incorrect sorry the this option is incorrect that the second does not converge and this is also incorrect so i have to check whether the first one now converges or not right that is what i need to check so to order to check this out what you can do is this seems to be like ap gp series the numerators are in ap 1 then 2 then 3 then 4 and so on and the denominator seems to be in gp so whenever you see any series which is in ap gp series what you can do is you can just go ahead and you can look into the first term so for example here i see that the gp is where every common ratio is half right you see that from here to here i am multiplying with half just look into the gp aspect from here to here i am multiplying with half from here to here i am multiplying with half so what you can go ahead and do in this case is you can go ahead and multiply this entire series by half throughout right so if you will go ahead and multiply it with half so s with half will give you half of f half of s this will give you half squared up this will give you 2 by 2 to the power 3 this will give you 3 by 2 to the power 4 4 by 2 to the power 5 and so on and so forth so you will see that everywhere in the denominator there is an additional 2 and now what you will do is you will subtract so when you will subtract now so this and this term will be subtracted so this will be 2 by 2 to the power 2 minus 1 by 2 to the power 2 so this will be 1 by 2 to the power 2 right similarly you can go ahead and see that this and this term will be subtracted so this will be 3 by 2 to the power 3 minus 2 by 2 to the power 3 so 1 by 2 to the power 3 right so you will notice that this term remains intact this is what is coming here and then when this is subtracted i am left up with 1 by 2 square this is subtracted 1 by 2 cube and so on and so forth and on the left hand side this is going to be s minus half of s so this will be simply half of s right so here i will be left up with s by 2 and on the other side on the right hand side you can see that this is just infinite gp and the sum of infinite gp is going to be a upon 1 minus common ratio so this is going to be half by half which is going to be 1 so the right hand side is going to go ahead and give you 1 and the left hand side will be s by 2 so if s by 2 will be 1 then s will be 2 and s actually represented the sum of this entire thing and that is coming out as 2 so if this entire sum is coming out as 2 we can say that this is also a convergent series so we can say that both converges another thing that you could have gone ahead and done is you could have used the ratio test so i am giving you this as a homework to retest this thing using the ratio test and to prove that this series actually converges right okay beta come to the next question now this says that whether this function is continuous or not and whether this function is differentiable or not so what is because this is absolute value of x this becomes x if x is positive and it becomes minus x if x is negative so what i have gone ahead and done in this case therefore is that i have written this as x into x if x is positive and i have written this as minus of x into x if x is negative if x is negative so this goes ahead and becomes x square if x is positive and minus x square if x is negative 
and if you were to plot this thing so beta so in this quadrant when x is positive y is x square so x square looks like this and in this quadrant when it is negative y is negative of x square so it must look like this so this will be my function x mod x y is equal to x mod x will look like this now the question is is this function differentiable or not so clearly the differentiation of x square will be 2x and differentiation of minus x square will be minus 2x i can clearly differentiate this function so yes in fact this function is a differentiable function at x equal to 0 and when i will plug in the value this will also give me 2 into 0 0 and here also i will get minus 2 into 0 0 so we can go ahead and say that yes this is a differentiable function differentiable at x equal to 0 okay come to the next question so now this says what about this sequence does this sequence has any limit or not better look here you can see that this sequence says minus 1 to the power n plus 1 suppose i take n to be 0 so i will get minus 1 to the power 0 plus 1 so minus 1 to the power 1 that means minus 1 suppose i take n to be 1 so minus 1 to the power 2 so 1 then minus 1 then 1 then minus 1 then 1 and so on now we need to ask does this sequence has a limit or not for any sequence to have a limit it must approach to that number but imagine if i just take limit n tends to infinity a n then we don't know what this in what this infinite number would be suppose i tell you that i have taken a very very big number infinity represents this number right then i know because this is even number and whenever i am plugging in an even number here i am getting the answer as minus 1 so i know that it will approach minus 1 but the moment i represent infinity with an odd number i have one at the end i know it will it will go towards one so we don't know whether it will approach minus one or one right it will depend on what this n is whether n is negative uh, odd or even right are you getting it so in that case we can go ahead and say that limit does not exist because it is not approaching one number rather it is approaching two numbers which is which is ideally saying it is not approaching a particular limit right so we can say that it can be minus one or plus one and therefore the limit does not exist right so minus one and one can be called as limit points there are two limit points but no limit right there are two limit points but no limit so the correct answer to this question will be a that limit does not exist okay beta thank you